Welcome to a brand new episode of PBA q and I'm your host, CEO of the PBA, Coley Edison. With me today is the one, the only, EJ Tackett. Where are you quarantined, EJ? Uh, Bluffton, Indiana, where I, where I live. And unlike uh, a couple of our bowlers out there, you actually have access to a bowling alley, don't you? I do. My parents own a bowling center. It's about five miles from here. It takes about seven minutes. I live in a very small town. Um, there actually isn't even uh, any red lights between my house and the bowling center. There's only one stop sign. <laughs> wow. That is a small town. Yeah. And yeah, we have, uh, are you I think able to practice? Have, um, I actually haven't bowled. Uh, I bowled a thing the other day with Brad Angelo. We did a, an, a virtual match. And um, that was actually the first time I had bowled since the World Championship show. Um, I've taken, taken some time off just to you know, kind of relax, do some stuff around the house, that, that sort of thing. And um, as soon as we, I get word from, uh, from you and everyone else when we can actually go back and bowl, then uh, I'll definitely be uh, getting in the bowling center and, and practicing and working and getting ready to uh, finish this season. Well, uh, on PBA Q&A, we have three rounds where we talk to our top bowlers. We want to learn all about what's going on in EJ's head. Um, let us see the true EJ that we may not get to see when we're out on tour. So we have three rounds of questions on this show. The first is rapid fire. This is where I'm going to ask you your favorite this and that, and really just think quick on your feet and give me your answers. The next, we'll head into our plead the fifth. Frame. This is your chance to answer our questions honestly or plead the fifth frame. And lastly, we'll get to some PBA trivia. Are you ready to dive right in, EJ? No, I was born ready. <laughs> All right, then here we go. Let's get started with our rapid fire questions. EJ, what is your favorite PBA moment? Uh, when I actually, when I won the uh, 2016 World Championships, and my dad was able to be there. That is awesome. All right, so in the bowling world, you're known as Squirrel. Where did that come from? Explain it to all of us. Okay, so a friend of mine from Eastern Ohio, he's a regional bowler, actually bowls on the 50 tour now. His name's Tony Johnson. Came up to me one day and said, uh, what's up, Squirrel? And I looked at him like, dude, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, he goes, you don't know why I call you Squirrel? I said, no. And he used a term that we use in bowling. When you have a really good look all the time, you're striking a lot, you say you have the nut. Well, he goes, well, because you always got the nuts. So he called me squirrel and it just kind of stuck. And then uh, we went to Portland, Maine and I bowled the first PBA 300 there and you get a brick and uh, they asked for a nickname. So I was like, well, squirrel, I guess is what it's going to be. And it's, it's kind of stuck. And uh, those people up in Portland, Maine, our fans up there, they, they just kind of ran with it. And there's been several squirrel suits up there for the PBA league. <laughs> Yes, once you give Bopo a nickname, they are going to run with it as far as they can. Yeah, and they did. It was awesome. <laughs> awesome. Well, EJ, you won Rookie of the Year 2012 to 2013. You were Player of the Year in 2016. What's the next big achievement? What's the next big goal that you have for yourself on the PBA Tour? Um, I guess just keep winning. Um, you know, I, I've, I've had a really good career so far. And it's just keeping on that path and, and keep being successful, whether that sometimes successful isn't always winning. Um, the last year and a half, I've bowled really, really well. I've had only one win, though. Um, I've made several TV shows, a bunch of seconds, thirds, you know, all that kind of thing. I feel like I'm bowling really good and I'm kind of in a, you know, a, a valley of my career as far as winning tournaments. And I think if I just keep doing the same things, I'll start winning again. So it's just keeping my mindset on, on what I'm doing right now and just staying the course and uh, letting uh, the, the ebb and flow of a career just play itself out. Is there any like title out there that's been elusive so far that you're really gunning for? Um, the other three majors that I haven't won. Um, okay. <laughs> I've finished uh, second in the players and the masters and I've made the show at the U S open. So I've been really close uh, two times I was on the show and the other. So those other three majors, but um, other than the majors, uh, winning in Indianapolis is one that really, really is important to me. And I, I said in an interview, like, it's one of those things where at the end of my career, I don't feel like my career will be completely fulfilled if I don't win in Indianapolis, just because it's close to home. And that bowling center has been 
involved with the PBA basically since its existence. And a lot of the legends of our sport and big names have won in that building. And, and I want that banner hanging up in that bar uh, in that bowling center. Oh, that's great. So I recently found out that you were a serious competitive golfer growing up. How did you make the decision to go pro in bowling and not pursue golf? Uh, Jordan Spieth. I couldn't beat him. <laughs> um, okay. Actually. You know your competition. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I qualified for a couple of junior events, uh, U.S. Junior Amateur and um, the uh, PGA, Junior PGA Championship. And uh, Junior PGA Championship, uh, the first round, Justin Thomas set the course record when I was playing, um, when I played the U S junior am, uh, I actually met Jordan there and I went out on the range. I was hitting balls. It was, it was later in the evening, five thirty, six o'clock. And I was the only one out there. This kid comes walking out, starts hitting balls. And I look over, it's Jordan's speed. I get done hitting my golf balls and I just stand there and watch my dad's with me. And I stood there for maybe five or 10 minutes and just watched him just same spot over and over. And I took, turned to my dad and I said, well, I'm not good enough, <laughs> but after that, I went and played in college, and I played against a bunch of kids in, in high school that are now on the PGA Tour, that have won on the PGA Tour, and um, I saw all this talent, and I, I knew I was really good, but those guys are on another level, mm -hmm. so I decided, well, I'm just going to try bowling and see if that works out. <laughs> well, it worked out for us. I'm happy we got you. <laughs> All right, uh, EJ, we let a lot of people know that we were going to be interviewing you today, and so we have some questions from the fans. Okay. Okay, so Aaron D. Biff wants to know, what does EJ stand for? Uh, my real name's actually Eddie Dean, um, but I'm the second, so the junior is where the, where the J comes from. All right. Next question comes from Woggy285. He wants to know, you know, he says that you're one of the crankers, the power players out there like Tommy and Sean. He wants to know, how did you, what did you do to increase your rev rate and to get it so high? Um, well, it, it developed when I was very young. My, my dad has been my coach my entire life. And when uh, I was about six or seven is when I was actually big enough and strong enough that I could start throwing the ball with one hand. And my dad just taught me the fundamentals of bowling, you know, the basics and said, go figure it out. Go do it your way. And we'll fine tune it along the way. And the product is what you see today. But I grew up watching guys like Tommy Jones and uh, Pete and Robert Smith and all these guys. And I watched them hook the ball all over the lane. I'm like, well, I want to do that. So I went out and I had the ability. I had a bowling center that I could just go bowl and bowl and bowl. And I was able to just kind of figure it out and do it my own way. Um, and it's not really narrowed down to one particular thing. It was just I learned at a very young age how to create revolutions on the bowling ball and just developed it further um, as I grew older. Yeah, so I think that goes to show that, you know, how you start isn't always how you're going to get up, end up, but what you practice is, is really what you develop. Absolutely. All right, so this one is from Zachary Rawlings. What is your favorite thing to do when you're not bowling? Uh, play golf, of course. <laughs> I knew that one was coming. <laughs> the weather's nice. If, uh, um, if the weather's not nice, and I guess I just stay inside and uh, do projects around the house. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. That has been rapid fire questions. All right. We're going to head into our next section called Plead the Fifth Frame. You will have the option to answer the question, which we hope you do, or plead the fifth frame. Well, we'll completely understand if you're not comfortable answering the question. Are you ready for this, EJ? I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> okay. Who is the current active bowler you would least like to bowl against in a tournament final? Uh, it's, it's Belmo because I love bowling against him, but I also hate bowling against him. I want to beat him because he's, he's the best, but I don't like bowling against him because he's the best. <laughs> what is the most embarrassing thing that has ever happened to you on tour? <sighs> I'm going to plead the fifth on this one. Because, okay. yeah, it, it, right. it, I'll, I'll give a teaser. It was in Portland, Maine. All right. He's holding it from you, but fans, you guys probably know what it is. You blow powers. All right. What bowler has the strangest form? And every time they bowl, you're like, how did they even do that? Uh, definitely butters <laughs> for sure. <laughs> All right. You are a friendly Midwesterner from Indiana, just like the Bowling Greats, Dick and Pete Weber. Um, but where would you say in this country the most annoying bowlers come from? 
I don't know if I would say the most annoying. I don't know if I'd use that word, but you're not going to like this, but I would definitely say the East Coast. They're definitely the most loud. For sure. Okay. All right. You know, I'm born and raised in... All right. New Jersey, New York. So we'll talk later. All right. Who's the worst roommate you've ever had on tour? Worst roommate? Uh... Andrew Graff. I, I, I room with him. He does a bowl on tour now, but he bowled quite a few years when I first on tour. And um, he's just like a wire wired and he's up all night. He's like a gamer. And I room, uh, he's like up three, four, five in the morning, like on his keyboard. I'm like, dude, go to bed. We got a bowl in four hours. <laughs> like, <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for your honesty. We only had a, uh, one plead the fifth frame, so that's not bad. We're going to head into our final segment. So right now, Kyle Troop holds the record. Uh, he has five correct answers on PBA trivia. We did, right. however, make it harder, and it is now no longer multiple choice. <laughs> ah, okay. So um, let's see how EJ does. We're going to do a PBA trivia. You're going to have a minute to answer as many questions as you can. The time will start as soon as I finish reading the first question. Okay. You ready to flex your trivia muscles? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Jason Belmonte has won PBA Player of the Year five of the last seven years. You won in 2016. Can you name the other winner? Andrew Anderson. Good. How many 300 games have you bowled in PBA tournaments? Uh, I think it's 16. 17. Oh. Name two PBA bowlers other than you that go by initials. Uh, DJ Archer and AJ Chapman. Correct. Name the first pro bowler to earn a million dollars. Was it Earl Anthony? It was. What is the term for a 200 game achieved with alternating strikes and spares throughout each frame? That's 200. Correct. A 4 6 7 10 split is known as what? Big four. Correct. At the 1970 Tournament of Champions, Don Johnson famously took home the title with a score of 299. Who did he defeat for the championship? I have no idea. Dick Ricker. A turkey refers to three strikes in a row. What bird refers to three open frames in a row? No clue. <laughs> we were looking for a buzzard. Uh, and my time is up. How many did he get right, team? Do, 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 do. Five. Five correct. You are now tied with Kyle Troop as a defending reigning champ of PBA trivia. Great job, EJ. I had to screw up my own one. <laughs> yeah, study, study your own tapes. You better be watching. I was close. I was close. Yes. Well, EJ, we loved having you on the show. Thanks for taking part in this. Is there anything else you want to say to all the fans at home? Um, just stay safe, and uh, hopefully this, this passes very, very soon, and we can all get back to doing what we love and get back in the lanes and return to a little bit of normalcy. And uh, I hope to see everyone out at the bowling centers um, as soon as we are allowed for fans to be there. I, I really hope to see huge, huge crowds of, of fans at every bowling center, bowling event that we go to. Um, it would be nice to, to interact with everyone again. So I, I, just, I hope we can uh, do that as soon as possible. Well, we share that sentiment. We can't wait to be back in the lanes. Until then, join us next time for another episode of PBA Q&A. Thank you, EJ, for being on the show today. As always, we want everyone to submit their tapes of their bowling at home with the hashtag bowl at home. Like EJ said, stay safe, and we will see you soon. Tune in next week. This has been the third episode of PBA Q&A. Have a great time at home. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.